What's up boys and girls, Lambu here, and today I'm coming at you with the second part of the ZVP early game guides. Um, I'm gonna try to pretty much talk about anything that Protoss can do. And I will heavily rely on you guys having watched the first part, because those are the most standard timings, especially against Target, and I don't want to go through everything again. So, um, let's get straight to it, so I can so I can get through everything relatively quickly. Um, these are, again, the four games that I played with Skillos. These are not perfect games by any means. I simply just played four games with Skillos, told them to do four different builds, very standard stuff, so I can use the replays from it. Um, from it. And now what he did this game is he blocked our natural. And this is very important because I don't think there is a perfect guide on what to do yet. Uh, on what what exactly do you want to do when your natural gets blocked. First of all, again, we moved our drone out earlier. So that the moment we see his probe with our drone, we mineral walk here through the probe so we don't get delayed. And then we're gonna... Yeah, we, we should have immediately started an extra drone. Um... Yeah, I played these games in the morning, so <laughs> I'm a little bit slow on some things. But the moment you see the probe on maps where the third is very far away, you start a drone immediately and then you 17 hatch at 300 minutes. For example, on Romanticide, easily I could have 16 hatch with that timing that I went out of my main base. You guys will learn at which maps that's the case. For example, Pillar is relatively far away, Romanticide very close. Uh, you can just test it out. Usually the safer play is to just go for 17 hatch. So now we're 17 hatching. We keep making drones, the build order again is the same. We're gonna go for an 18 gas and 17 pool. And the next three drones get again rallied into the gas. The second overlord, I don't always do this. Uh, very often I uh, move across the map with my second overlord, but I want you guys, again, I want to simplify this and I know a bunch of you are getting cannon rushed at your third base. Um, just put your overlord towards the third base. If you get cannon rush, you can cancel it and expand here. And then have this as a three base setup and you're miles ahead. Like cannon rushing the third base. If you if you see it in time to cancel it. Um, especially if you can also force a couple of extra buildings with a couple of drones. is extremely good for the Zork. So don't worry about that at all. As long as you have your second overlord here, you're fine. And 20th drone gets ready to the third base. Do not go for 19 overlord. Uh, your queen is not the thing that's supply blocked, your zergling is the thing that's supply blocked, and that doesn't actually change anything, really. Uh, because if you if you were to run by, you would usually also use zerglings from here. So now, here is the here is the first deviation. So the moment the pool is done, the overlord pops. We start two queens. This is similar to the way it was before, but now we start a drone at our third base, and a pair of links in our main base. And this is, like, what I'm about to show you is the most optimized version that I found uh, from w what you're supposed to do when you get blocked. And basically what this relies on is something that I talked about yesterday as well already, is that your drones lose mining time if you make them from the main base. So whenever you have a larva here, you're going to make it into a drone. So this simplifies things a lot, but, I will, so, but I'm going to take a closer look at what exactly we make from the main base, right? Um... The thing on top of that is that the moment there are adepts here, and when you get blocked, you can't transfer any drones anymore. So this will also be um, be a factor in how we decide to drone. But basically, every single larva that we get from our third base is gonna be made into a drone. We want to have 16 on the mineral line here as early as possible. So we're going drone, zerglings, and the main base. These zerglings are again, so we can take our third base nice and early. And then the, 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 with the next two larva, again, we're making a drone here. And then a pair of links in the main base. Now we start speed at 100 gas and we pull all three drones out of gas after 100. Um, this is so, again, you. this is just smart because you don't want to um, have one drone here and then you would need to transfer it a little bit uh, later or you would have one less drone on the mineral line. In general, just you want to have your mineral line, uh, mineral income up as fast as possible when you when you get your natural block. So we made all four zerglings in the main base. Now uh, at around 225, this this will become a drone. The next larva in the main base. So remember that as well. This drone will get ready to the third base. So this drone right here will be ready to the third base. Um, at 225 is the timing that I'm gonna tell you guys. You should run down with a drone and then take your natural. 
These two Zerglings are supposed to chase away the probe, which isn't here right now. Uh, again, I'm gonna be going for a 32 hatchery here, but as I said in the first video, you're gonna have to do inject at the same time as placing down the hatchery, which can be a, uh, a little bit hard. And because we have 15 out of 16, since we moved down with a drone here to take the hatchery, the next larva in the main base, right, we already made a drone here, the next larva in the main base will be rallied to the mineral patch where we took the drone from. So we have 15 now, this mineral patch only has one drone. So the next drone, so we make two drones, the next one gets rallied here, and then the next drone, so it doesn't interfere with an adept that might be super early and Chrono set out for some reason straight running here, uh, will be the one that goes to the, back to the mineral line here. It's very important to, like, you guys can practice this a little bit, but every larva is very important. I actually messed this up. I sent this drone here and this drone across, which uh, does not really matter, but I think uh, the other way around is a little bit safer, so you guys don't, again, again don't. I want you guys to think as, as little as possible and just execute your build order properly. This is something that makes other races uh, sometimes easier uh, to improve on with than Zurg, but if you guys just get the early game down super well, you guys can gain MMR in no time. So just practice this a, a bunch of times. So we make two drones here. This one should have been the one that's rallied to the third base, and then the next one is the one that gets rallied back to the main. Now the next thing we do different is we go. We don't go for a creep tumor at the front. Creep tumor first, very very uh, standard. If you go and take your hatchery here, for a couple of reasons, this helps you defend two adepts a little bit easier. Um, at the same time, it also Make, make makes it so your um, natural and your third base are connected the moment the oracle shows up, which is super important. So usually Cryptomer first is very crucial, but because we're we would lose so much mining time since we got blocked, we go for an inject first here because we want the larva to spawn here. And now what you can do is you can put a Cryptomer here, and that's really good, but. I know for a fact that you guys will put a creep tumor here, spread it once, and then forget about it. Maybe not even spread it once, to be honest. So I want you guys to double inject here. I think double inject is really good anyways. Uh, we're gonna get an early second queen here later on, we're gonna pop down a creep tumor here. So I actually go double inject myself, creep tumor in the main, also not a bad decision at all. It helps you a little bit if they go for decide to go for double adapt pressure, and you might be like, Lambo, but no, I don't have creep here. What about the double adapt pressure? You just gotta make a couple extra links. Um, if you if you block the opponent's natural and you chrono boost out two adapts, first of all, you can never know with with this probe. Uh, you, you can never know if there are zerglings on the map. So one thing, if you struggle with it, just have two zerglings on the map once they leave with the second adapt random by. That's very good against that. For example, you can um, like the moment the moment they move out, you can try to run in. But if you if if you just want to learn the build order, I, I would suggest that you guys just make a couple extra zerglings, so like maybe six in the third, four in the main, very often they're gonna lose them at the moment zergling speed is done. Uh, if they super commit in, we also have a relatively early third queen here. Anyways, let's get back to it. So again, every single larva at the third base is gonna be made into a drone. In the main base, the next larva here is gonna be made into an overlord. So again, 32, we're making an overlord. The build order now is very, very similar to the build order that we used um, without getting our natural blocked. The Overlord, by the way, saw no warp grid, but I'm just gonna focus on what we're doing here, because this is no matter if it's Glaives or not. So 32 Overlord here, and then 32, after the Overlord, we start a Queen at the, thir at the third base. We split our links 2 and 2. Um, so we can start attacking the Adept if the Adept tries to die for the workers. And then, after the Overlord, the next Larva will be a drone that gets ready into the gas. This might seem complicated, but you don't need to focus on anything at the third base, so you can really know what to do with each larva by yourself. So now you should be at 36 out of 44. What you do right now is you make an overlord in the main base. So after this drone, you make an overlord in the main base once the larva pops. Then you use all the larva on your third for drones. Again, we're saturated. We're saturated here on the mineral line already. So we want to use the larva on the third base first and turn this into drones. Uh, th th this one as well should have turned into a drone. And then after, we start a queen in the main. And this queen will be in time for an oracle, so no matter if you scout oracle, if you don't scout anything, you're gonna be fine against an oracle. Okay? So, th this, this basically is the build. And now then, we're gonna have uh, 15 drones here with uh, the next 
with this uh, larva as well and then the next one also turning into a drone and then we're going to be 16 here and then the next two larvae in the main base that you still have left over from the inject you turn them into drones and rally them to the gas and that's basically the setup let's continue also we saw a uh, second adept on the other side so if you see two adepts just run in if i did not see two adepts right now i would from the main larva make two extra pairs of links and create a ring of vision uh, I will show this in the next replay, because uh, in the next replay he is going to go Stalker. But if there is an Adept, you can run in and there is nothing he can do. He needs to show his target unit, or if I mean, if he's going Glaives without a Stalker or something, you would see it with the Overlord. Either way, this is the reason I'm not making extra Zerglings, but again, I would make the Zerglings from the main base, because we want to still hit the 16 Drone Mineral Saturation at the third base. The moment this Queen spawns, we make a fifth Queen. Also at the third base, this queen that did the first inject at the third made a creep tumor now. Um, in the main base, this can make a creep tumor or the one that spawns, it doesn't really matter as much. We see an overlord. I forgot to mention, but 44 is also overlord. I'm gonna write this also down maybe in the in the top right of your screen. Um, especially if you see an adapt adapt opener, you should al already have an overlord here ready to unsupply block yourself because more likely than not there is going to be a void and that kills the overlord instantly so you should be ready for that which i pretty much am this was slightly too late and you guys also are going to have the hatchery done already because i made that at 32 instead of 30. so now we're here the moment this um hatchery spawns by the way if it's an oracle you make a sport crawler here in your third base and you can after it's done you move the two queens here and then you can start transferring drones here, rallying this here. And also, because we took our third base first, we now, after we're at 16 out of 16, we rally the third base to our natural, we rally the main to our natural. Right? This is how the saturation works. And then, it, as I said, if we saw an oracle, we would have made a spore crawler here. We could have seen them with the links, for example, if there was a stalker. And we would just chill here with the queens until um, the spore crawler is done, then move to the natural. In that case, I also would have made a second spore crawler in the natural. Because it's void ray first, guys, you can delay your spore crawler until four minutes. Void ray takes longer than um, than a phoenix. So it's not like if they, if they want to go phoenix oracle, you need your spore crawler a little bit earlier. Because then they can pick up the queen. Uh, the, the, they can pick up a queen, and then if you have two queens, you actually lose a lot of drones. So against Phoenix, you need or uh, Spore Crawlers a little bit earlier. Um, against Oracle, you can delay it a, a little bit more against Void Ray, rather. Um, Void Rays are not uh, that, that great at running across the map and starting to kill drones. And now our setup, again, is looking exactly the same. We have three queens here, two queens in the main. This is the crew tumor that I was talking about before. And... This this will make a queen the moment the natural is done. So the, the moment, in, in this case, is the third base on your natural location. The moment this is done, you make a queen. I have a small supply block here. We already scouted again. Now I can start for, so talking a little bit about what happens on the other side. Again, I have zerglings on the exits. I scouted the third base, went down at four minutes. So everything that I talked about yesterday will still hold true today. And I know the video has probably already been going on for 10 minutes and we only are four minutes in game, but... If you guys learn this build properly, your timings are going to be exactly the same and you don't have to worry about it as much. Um, like every time you get blocked, then the entire game shouldn't look that different. It, in, in fact, it should look very similar. So now the timings are very similar to last game. And now let's just talk about um, what changes because this game he, he played two staggered Voyager, which is very, very common. Okay, this Zergling is running away a little bit from the Void Rain. This is still patrolling. Um, again, we're getting all our gases up at once. The, the first, right, one thing that changes is the first two gases that you take are on the third base. So you can rally the third back to the third. This also makes sense, right? It's very similar to, basically, this is just the same as your natural base. It's just at a different location. So the first two gases you take at gas number two and three at the same time as the Roach one, right? Um, we just rally this base back here and then take the gas. And then you're going to notice all my mineral lines will fill up at a very similar time. And then again, we're adding these last geysers. Um, right. And now you you might be wondering, how do you know it's Void Race? Well, usually they just show them. So you kind of just scout it with Zerglings. But as I said before, also you just scout with Zerglings. So if, for example, if there are sentries or something here, you know it's not Void Race. What I saw is I saw gases. 
So I, I, I knew in fact that it was Void Race. The moment I saw that, I also started three extra queens. So now let's talk about what we do against two Stargate Void Ray, most of which actually takes part in the mid game. So it's not really um, the guide, the, 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 the correct guide for you to figure out. But if you guys want to play a macro game, after you get, after you get to 66 drones, the thing you invest money into, immediately three extra queens. And then immediately the next thing you do is take a forward base if you want to play macro. <clears throat> If you want to play macro, and I do, I'm not doing it this game because I'm going for a timing, which I just wanted to show you guys. I, I did a completely random timing here and it worked just because my early game is good. So if you guys have a similar early game and you do these random Roach Hydra Ravager timings, I'm playing against Skillus, who's a really good Protoss player. So if you guys do this against your Diamond players, you're, you're going to win if you macro correctly. So you, you, you have a, something to work towards. Like I'm going to show you guys this timing. I didn't even play perfect this game. If you guys can hit a timing even similar to this, you guys are gonna trash every single one that's playing Void Race. Even you can do this against standard openers as well. This type of timings, and you're probably gonna be very successful. And it's it's also very brain dead because you can go for a blind Hydra then and then just do it even against ground. Or you can go into Hydra Bane if you want. Also against ground. But if. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm getting too ahead of myself. So the moment I would have seen the Void Race. That's why we're making drones a little bit. Is I would have put down a fourth hatchery here. The earlier you have this, the more HP it has. It's very important. And then the way you defend the void race, first of all, linear bases are better against void race because that's how you take your fourth base here. The void race can go to the main. Or the, first of all, they go to the fourth. You need queens in front of the hatchery, so they're super far away, right? So let's say you have four queens here, which is the number I think you should have against the initial three void races that show up usually with the oracle. Then the voyagers can go up here and you're like, oh, damn, I can't run back with them now, right? Otherwise I lose the hatchery as well, but now I don't really have that much. It's actually possible to even defend this base, so sometimes you will see Zerg players go for it. Uh, but linear bases are a lot easier, you can just uh, patrol with Zerglings, which is what I do not do this game because I'm not macroing, remember. Um, usually I would always have like 10 Zerglings on the map, which I do have like 7 Zerglings on the map. And I would patrol one here, one here. One here, one here. That's four Zerglings. That's all you need. And you see where the Void Rays are, are flying across. Even if your Zergling die, the Void Rays can teleport from here to here and then attack the fourth base. Just so you know where approximately to go with the Queens. So the way you split your Queens if you want to play Macro is you have the initial six Queens, right? Uh, I take one of the... I take the Queen from the Natural to the Queens that are at the third. And I would put my four Queens here in front of the Hatchery. Very important so it doesn't die. Then the other two Queens... I would uh, use for the main base, and immediately you start three extra queens. You can also move the spore crawler from the natural to the main, so you have two queens and a spore here. Also, you will have two queens spawning ar around the time when the voyagers attack, plus you can start hydras around the time the vo voyagers attack, so don't worry about having two queens with maybe two spores here initially, just for a little bit. Um, like, the, the voyagers very rarely they can do anything in the main base, especially if you have a hydra then timed after, like, after your lair is done, the moment you realize the void race stuff is happening. Uh, the most important part is that you actually have enough or more than enough queens in position at your fourth base. Also, the moment this extra queen spawns, this is going to be like the seven, eight, and nine queen. You put an extra queen here in case they rally more void race towards the fourth base. You want to have like five queens here. But usually at that moment in time, you can also start hydra production. So th those are the most important parts about the Void Ray defense. After you have that, after you have these nine queens, let's say, to, to make your life a little bit easier, if you want to go into late game, you can even make more queens. If you want to hit a queen time, you can make more queens. If you want to have a lurker time, you can make more queens. If you want to play Hydra Bane, you shouldn't really make more queens than that. In that case, you can just start eight Hydras or so, uh, most of which go to the main, and then you should have like five or six queens here at that point, since you can inject. And go back to injecting with the queens. Void race can never attack hydras. Also, one massive tip is that if your if your opponent is engaging with void race into your queens, pull back the queen that is being attacked because then the void race needs to super overcommit to try and finish it off. In which case, he can't just micro back single void race that get hurt very easily. Also, the moment you realize it's void race, start saving for transfusion. You see me putting down very little cryptomers here. Like, very, very little. I have overall probably four Cryptomers. I think this one died, and here one of them died as well. Um, so very, very little Cryptomers, because Transfuses are super good against Void Race too. Let's see how this game plays out, though. 
So we go up to 66 drones, I'm even going a little bit above 66, like as I said, this is not the cleanest ever. And then the moment I have the 9 queens, I start moving out with them. I get Hydra range. I'm, ju I'm just moving out with the queens. If I, I, I saw the Void Race moving here, otherwise I would have kept some Hydras here at first. And then move ac across with them a little bit later, and now I'm just attacking with Roach. Ravager, Hydra, Queen. And I'm hitting his base at 7 minutes and 20, with 170 supply. My plus one is almost done, I have Hydra range, I have Ravagers, and I have like 9 queens on the way here. While I'm still producing queens at home, I also stacked some injects, in case you're wondering why that all of this is injected. So yeah, I made 3 extra queens at home as well. So, this is not any specific counter to Void Raid that I think should always work. But for you guys, I do think it, this should always work if you macro the same as I, I do, or even, even just similar to that, because they're not going to have Storm at that moment in time. Um, so yeah, th this already would count towards mid-game, I just wanted to show this. That you guys don't need to go for the craziest threat. Uh, part of the early game would have still been, I think, droning this up, so... The moment after you make these 8 Hydras, the initial 8 Hydras to defend, Let's say you are just expanding, you can immediately go to 80 drones, you can play Hydra Bane, you can try to play Roach Hydra Lurker, uh, you can you can really do whatever you want, you can easily go 80 drones, probably even 88 with 8 gas, if you want to play late game. Um, Void Rays do not have strong uh, attacks afterwards, like the, the strongest thing they can have is like a 12 gate charge on Archon, but you can defend it with a lot of drones, as long as you're in position you should be fine. So yeah, the, 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 just make sure to use these main tips. They gave you about the Voyager early game, and then the rest you guys can figure out yourself. I'm probably going to make a couple more videos about different responses to Void Race as well, but this is mostly about the early game in this game. So let's get on to the next, to the next replay, which is going to be Glaives. Just kidding, actually the Glaives replay will be in the next uh, video. I'm actually going to make a third part of the early game guide, um, because I recorded all of the... I recorded a video against Robo and a video against Glaives, and then I also talked about all the other openers. So that ended up taking forever, and I know <clears throat> YouTube viewers don't have a very high attention span, so <laughs> I want to. I, I'm, I'm rather going to bring out a third part to the early game uh, ZVP saga on my channel. So I hope this could help, and the next video will probably be on Thursday, the next early game video. So look forward to that. Tomorrow we're going to have a um, Archon match where I'm going to be playing with a Platinum player against Harrison with a Platinum player, so you can, guys can, can look forward to that. This series will continue on Thursday. Uh, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, uh, leave a comment, let me know what other builds I should I should do in the third part, even though I already recorded it, so I'm, I'm not going to lie, it doesn't matter. But I can still answer it in the comments in case it doesn't show up, so... <laughs> um, yeah, thank you guys. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.